if that doesn't matter to you, if that doesn't matter to you, that's fine. That's your own prerogative. My name is Rinsley. And that's all that matters. You're, 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 My name is Rinsley. Can it be blotted out? So, what are the qualifications for your name being written in the book of life? What are the wages of sin? So how is your name written in the book of life if you're sinning willfully? You're in the book of death right now. That's right. You're in the congregation of the dead. The fruit is what speaks. At the end of the day, your life is what speaks for you. Truly, what you, you, we could stand and say anything we want, but at the end of the day, what God has truly done in you is what you live or what you actually do. That's what speaks for you. That's Look, what Jesus said by your You talk a good game because most of the stuff you're saying I agree with until you get to the point where you're disobeying what you're talking about. When your actions contradict what you're saying. Look, as soon as you get your life in order and you stop sinning, then come up here and stand with us. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead. This one real quick. Baruch 4 from the top. This is the book of the commandments of God. Book of the commandments of God. And the law that endureth forever. This is how we find out if you're going to be written in the book of life or in the book of the dead, that Egyptian bullshit. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. If you keep the commandments, you come to life. But such as leave it shall die. If you're not keeping the commandments, you're not written in the book of life. You can't claim that. Oh, your master didn't even claim that. Answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We're done. All praise. Mexican brothers getting shot in their own driveway in front of their kids. All of these are the beginning of sorrow, right? We believe these things. We come out here every week to show our faith. Come out here and stop you. Did we come out here to talk to you? Did we come out here to talk to you? No, we came out here to talk to our people. We came out here to spread love to Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Same people, your people. Because I know y'all came out here quick for a conversation, right? Brian, Sebastian, y'all Israelites, right? You guys, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Everything happens in a pattern. These are the children of the slave masters that forced you guys to speak English and Spanish. Right. These are both European languages. Forced your names to be Rodriguez and Garcia and Gonzalez, because those are European names, God. right? God is the God of the oppressed, right? Jesus is a savior for those that are in bondage not, this is not a universal God. He's a God for those that are at the bottom of society. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Though. Deuteronomy. Actually, give me Revelation 13 and 10 first. Did we get that for them? I'm going to get this for y'all real quick because I know these two are itching to get out of here. But, oh no, y'all good? Okay. Okay, cool. Let's get Romans 9 and 13 real quick. So, our forefathers in the Bible, you guys come from Jacob. If you're so-called Hispanic on your father's side, so-called Mexican on your father's side, you come from Jacob, who is the father of God's chosen people. These people, if they're Caucasian on their father's side, their forefather is Esau. These two are twin brothers in the Bible, right? Go ahead. Romans 9 verse 14. 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. So God says he loves your forefather and all his descendants. Black, Hispanics, Native Americans come from Jacob. God says he loves you and he will always love you. He greeted him. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Who is the progenitor of so-called Caucasian people today. God says he hates so-called Caucasian people and their descendants and he will always hate them. Right. Right? So we're setting the standard or a foundation of who this Bible is for and who it's not for, right? We just read to you that Jesus Christ, even though you once believed that he looked like these Caucasian people, is a dark-skinned, so-called African-American looking man, right? So, give me this. Revelation 13, 
Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. Bring it out! He that leadeth into captivity. Because these Caucasian people led Hispanics, natives, and black people into slavery. Shall go into captivity. This is Jesus Christ's words. Jesus doesn't love everybody. He says when he comes back the second time, he's coming to save black, Hispanics, and natives. And he's going to make these people go into slavery. That's right. Read. He that killeth with the sword. Because they killed our people by the millions, now billions down there. Right? Must be killed with the sword. Jesus Christ says they have to die. There's no way getting around that. Right? That's the only way to balance the skills. Right? You can't pay me reparations or a certain amount of money for the death of my grandparents and my parents for it to be okay. Right? You have to die. Read. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. God feels a special way about black Hispanics and Native Americans. He doesn't feel like this for everybody. Caucasians came from the Greeks and the Romans and they had their own gods. This is the God of the Israelites, which you guys are. Read. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art a holy people. God says you're holy. Everybody's not holy, right? Holy just means separate from the rest of the crowd, right? You guys are different than everybody else, read. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, right? The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. He chose you for a special purpose. Go ahead. To be a special people unto himself. He chose you to be special. If everybody is special, nobody is, right? right? Special denotes a difference. You're different than everybody else walking this earth, read. A people are to himself. Hey, black, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God's chosen people, read. That's right. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, equal to. Above, above all people that are, that are upon the face of the earth. earth. Black, Hispanics, and Natives are beneath everybody. Above, above all people that are, that are upon the face of the earth. earth. According to God, you're above everybody else. That's right. He cares about you more than everybody else. That's right. Everybody is his creation. What did Jesus say about people exalting themselves? Ain't nobody exalted. We're just reading the Bible. We're reading what Those God who said about themselves it. Will be what? Huh? Those who exalt themselves will be humble. Okay, that's fine. I agree with that. I'm gonna check Matthew 6 5. Hold on, hold on. You look to be this is, other hold than on. Creeds, hold you? on. What's your denomination? What denomination of Christianity are you? I don't identify with any denomination. Okay, do you believe in the Bible? Of course I do. Okay, let's read the Bible again. Yeah, read 6 5. Matthew Hold six, on. Five. I'm going to read this and then you explain to me what it's saying. Right. Since you got all the answers. Read. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Who is the book of Deuteronomy 2? The people of God. The people who, which were who at this time? The Jews, right? The Israelites. So Deuteronomy was written by Moses and the scribes. But we're not under the law. Hold time. on, hold on. I'm just asking you to explain this verse, and then we can go to the New Testament. Give me First Peter two and nine in the uh, ESV. Go ahead. It said, "You said this is to the Israelites from God." Read what God said, because it's not my words. My opinion doesn't matter. No, it does. It does matter. Hold on. My opinion, I'm saying God's word matters. My opinion doesn't. You're not even listening. I just told you I agree with you. My opinion doesn't matter. Somebody give him the digital flyer. All right, King. I'll take it easy. Y'all, God's chosen people come back to these commandments. Learn what God wants from you. What's your name now? What's your name? Robert, what's your nationality? What nation of people do you come from? Your mother, give me numbers 1 and 18. Where in the Bible does it say that? You got that from the Talmud, not the Bible. Right. I'm going to read the Torah and show you how we determine lineage, tribe, and nation. Because it's not by your mother. Right. So your mother is Jewish. What's your father? You don't know your father. Read. 
Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Read it out. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Right. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. Your pedigree or your lineage, your tribe and your nation is determined by who your father is, my not father, by who your mother is. is what? My father is God. What about the earthly man that put semen in your mom? Well, we don't live by the flesh, do we? Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Let's, I still want your understanding on this verse. Keep reading. Deuteronomy. So this was told. This was told to the Israelites by God himself with me removed out of the situation because I'm not saying this. This came way before I, I'm alive on this earth. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. He says the Israelites are holy. What does holy mean? One. What? Holy means one. One? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Prove that. <laughs> now you're just talking out of your ass. No, it doesn't. Holy means separate. Separate or Sin anointed, separate. yes. Separate. Sin is separate. God is a separatist. Jesus is a separatist. That's ridiculous. What are you talking about? Give me Luke 12 and 51. Okay. Didn't he say, I'm not coming to get uh, bring peace but a sword and division? Yeah, the truth does that. Okay, that's separatism. Right. <laughs> God says you're... The Israelites are holy or separate from everybody else. Read, the Lord thy God have chosen thee. I'm not the one that chose the Israelites. It says God chose them to be special people unto himself. To be different than everybody else and special to him. Read, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. I'm not exalting nobody. God said they're above everybody else. Aye. So... If you're going to say anything different, you're exalting yourself and being prideful and not submitting to what Actually, the word of God says. Yes, right. Read it. What Jesus says. <laughs> he says, God looks for those true worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth. Okay, prove I don't. You don't what's the spirit and what's the truth? God is the spirit. What? Give me John 6 and 63. <laughs> Let's see what the spirit is. You stay where I want. Uh, first Jesus Peter. literally says God is spirit, and those who worship Him worship Him in spirit and truth. Okay, so what did those Jesus qualify as the spirit? That's Actually, you get Matthew four and four. Three. John six, verse thirty-three. Bring it out. For the bread of God is six and six and three. John six, verse sixty-three. Bring it out. It is the spirit that quickens it. The spirit that makes one alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you. The words that I give you. The doctrine that I got from my father. Right. They are spirit. They right. are spirit. And they are life. Right. So the words that Jesus Christ came to give to the Israelites are spirit and life. The words that Jesus came with are the father's words, which makes the Torah valid. That's right. What we just read is spirit. Mm. Give me uh, Romans 7 and 14. Romans 7, verse 14. Bring it out. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. So what I just read in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, that is spiritual, and you're bucking up against it. God says the Israelites are above everybody else. That's the spirit. Jesus said that just worshipers. Okay, so how do we, by that, worshiping, give me a... Uh, Psalms 119 and 142. Spirit, we just read, is the word of God, the law of God, right? So spirit is the law. Let's get what the truth is. Psalms 119, verse 142. Out. Out. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. God's righteousness is everlasting. Read. Right. And thy law is the truth. The law is the truth. Right. So by the law, which is spirit and truth, how are you going to go up against that? This is how we worship him, in obedience to the law. What do you think truth is? What did, we, what did that just say? Because you're not listening. No, no, I'm asking you a question. What do you think truth is? I just gave you my answer. That's not that question. Yeah, read it again. Psalms. Apparently he's not listening now. Psalms 119, verse 142. Bring it he out. what is the truth after we already told him what the truth is. No, said, what, what does the truth mean? What does the truth mean? The law is the truth. The law is the standard for what's true and what's not true. Okay, but what is true then? The law. The words of God are true. And what is the law? 
what are the words of God? What we just read in Deuteronomy 7 and 6 that you're bucking up against. That's right. That the Israelites are above everybody else. Okay, but Jesus says that those words of God are not true. That's not true. But okay, who was he talking to when he said that? He was talking to some lady of the well. What was her nationality? She was a Gentile. Was she? Let's get John 4. I'm pretty sure. Hey. We gonna get, we gonna see how Jesus was talking to different nations of people. Go ahead, John. Yes, our father's will. Go ahead, John four and eleven. Bring it out. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Right. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? She just qualified herself as being a descendant from Jacob, meaning she's an Israelite. Right. right. So. Who she's telling is going to worship in spirit and truth is an Israelite woman. Let's get Matthew 15. See how he Why don't you finish the rest of that? What? Why don't you finish the rest of that? Why? When I already read the point. The point was who he's talking to. You said she's a Gentile. We just proved that she's an Israelite. Right. That was the point. So we don't need to read no more. Unless you have another point you want to so make. So if you're not an Israelite, you can't worship God. Perfect. Was the law given to anybody else other than the Israelites? All right, then. Read. Matthew 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus Christ said his mission was for the Israelites. He didn't come for nobody else. He didn't come to die for nobody else. He didn't come to grant repentance or salvation for nobody else. Right. But he said, for I came for my own, and my own So I gave for Wait, hold on, hold on. Everlasting life. Okay, so what are you saying? What are you saying? Because you're an Israelite. I'm a Gentile. No, you're not. You're Mexican, right? Um, so you don't need... Heaven. No, no. And wait, 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 wait. You can't say you're a Gentile if you don't even know if you're an Israelite or not. You're not. Even if I was an Israelite, Gentiles and Israelites now have the same way... What does Gentile mean? Jesus. What does Gentile mean? Gentiles were the people separated from God in the beginning. Before the Old Testament... The only people, like what you guys said. What's the Hebrew word for Gentile? I don't know. What is it? It's goy, which just means nation. <laughs> Israelites are exactly. Gentiles as well. So you can't say he came for the Gentiles. These are still Israelites. Give me uh Hold on, hold on. So speaking of that, though, you say it's a nation, right? Right. And the U.S. is our nation, right? We as a people, we make up the nation. The U.S. Right? We are not separated. The U.S. is a corporation. America is a country. We are a nation. We are a country. We are a people. This is a melting pot full of different nations, right? So, let's say, let's say right, because I'm Mexican, right? And I was born in Mexico. Okay. Right? When I come into this country, or let's say I was born in this country, and I'm Mexican, right? When I just belong to Mexico, there's a nation. The nation is Mexico. Okay. Right? So, what's your point? My point is... If you're a so-called Mexican patrilineally, you would belong, no, 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 you would belong to the nation of Israel. Well, this is what I'm getting to, right? Okay. Is if I'm born in the U.S., I belong to the U.S. I'm a part of the no, U.S. you're right? a U.S. citizen. Just like Paul was a, a Roman right? citizen, but yeah. he was an Israelite by nation. Right. Right, okay. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that one. Romans 11 <laughs> from the top. I say then. So you guys understand that Paul was a Roman citizen. Yeah. He was under the governing body of Rome, right? So he called himself a Roman I say then, had God cast away his people, God forbid. So you said, I came to my own, my own received me not. Now I'm going to these other people, right? My own received me not. We God, God cast away his people God because they rejected him. Read. God forbid. God forbid. Hell no. Read. For I also am an Israelite. It says Paul is an Israelite. From where? Of the seed of Abraham. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Why is he saying he's an Israelite if he's also a Roman? Because Isn't you're a Mexican-American, but you're also an Israelite. You guys are not Gentiles if your father's 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 are Mexican. <laughs> Salvation is for everybody. Okay, so there are prophecies 
in the Bible that have not happened yet about Jesus Christ coming the second time. Yes? You believe he's coming the second time? Amen. Okay, so what is he coming to do? He's going to come. Well, first, it's the rapture. And he's not, that's not his second coming. That's just going to pick up those who faithfully served Jesus Christ, who denied this world. He who served, who left the passions of the flesh. He who served Christ and loved others with the heart. So the believers are not going to have to go through the tribulations. They're going to get a ticket out of here yeah. before all that. What about the people it's that, just, what about the people that in Revelation... It says they're going to be beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right. Those are for the Jews. No, that's okay. So those are believing Jews that are going to be beheaded, killed, and still be saved. That's that, because that's the promise that God made to David. That he okay. Was save his people. Oh, that's that's Israelites. Right. Yeah. So that's so it's not Israelites. And Israelites have, have a promise too. of salvation. Yes. That regardless of what the Israelites do, that promise still stands because God is going to keep His word. I agree with that. I agree with that. Where was the promise made in prophecy, right, for other nations to be saved? Right. Give me Numbers twenty-four and seventeen. Give me Isaiah sixty-three. There are no promises for these other nations. Right. Jesus just said he didn't come for nobody else. Right. See, Jesus said, I don't make exception. What are you talking about? We just, he said That's out of his own mouth, I didn't come for anybody except the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. And That's an exception. The mercy that he had for others. That's like, we're now show in me, the grave. Show me where he, he called that woman in that same passage of bitch. God, uh, right. Which one? The one of the... The Canaanite one. The one that's in the cross. That asked for her daughter to be saved from and the devil. And they said that you don't deserve anything, but the, the meal is for the owners and the children. Yeah, but her faith. Yeah, but she, she, she only got crowned. She didn't get salvation. Right. Salvation is... Of God. No. And because God hasn't been... She helped her... her she faith. exercised her daughter from a demon that was possessing her and tormenting her, but she did not receive salvation. He just said salvation is for the Israelites. What you got? No. No, I want to know. Give me numbers. Go ahead. Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. So Get this up. is what's going to happen when Jesus Christ comes back the second time. Read. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Who is the star out of Jacob and scepter out of Israel? Are you guys familiar with this one? It's a prophecy of Jesus Christ coming back the second time, right? Man? This ruler and king coming out of the nation of Israel from the tribe of Judah, read. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab. He's going to smite and destroy the Moabites, right. which is a whole nation of people who apparently are not getting salvation because he's coming to destroy them, read. And destroy all the children of Sheth. Destroy all the children and descendants of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession. And Edom is going to be slaves in the kingdom. Go ahead. Seir also shall be a possession for right. his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. So now there's a juxtaposition between these people who are going to be destroyed or enslaved. And Israel who's receiving salvation. Go ahead. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. This is Jesus. And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. He's coming to destroy whole nations of people. Give me and that's Isaiah 45. Coming. That's the second that's coming. The second coming. So right salvation now, can't be for coming, everybody. Right. right now we're not the Hold on. Coming. But we're, we're talking right about salvation, right. which has to do with him coming back to save who he's coming to save. Right. Can I, can I pray to God still or no? You can pray all you want. That doesn't mean he hears you. That's right. So God doesn't hear me because of my race? Are you a sinner? Yeah. 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 Of course you're a sinner. Are you trying to... Are you living a life of sin? I don't think it's possible. Look, if I'll ask you like this. If you find out something in the Bible is against what God wants you to do, do you change it or do you make excuses for continuing in that pattern? How can I be saved between the, 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 whatever my salvation Look, if you're not an Israelite, it's not for you. So how am I supposed to be an Israelite? Though? By who? Your bloodline. You said you don't know who your dad is. So, so I'm screwed then because of my gene. You could be. I don't know what you are. Then what's the point of going to God for help? There is no. 
God is a helper of no Israelite. For help. If you're not an Israelite, no. Give me uh, John 9 and 31. Give me Proverbs 28. Who do I go to? Where do you talk about? Like, oh, 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 like, look, if you're not, I don't know if you're an Israelite or not. I'm on my knees because I need myself saved. Okay. So if you're crying, give me uh, give me what you got. Read that. You give me Hebrews 12 and 16. John chapter 9, verse 31. Check it out. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God doesn't hear sinners' prayers. Right. So I can't if you're, not, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a sinner who isn't repenting, no, God's not going to hear your prayers. Give me uh, Proverbs 28 and 9. Because of my race, I'm condemned to hell. What is hell? You're, if, if you're not an Israelite patrilineally, you will either die in America when America is destroyed. If you escape America, you may be killed anyways, or you're going into slavery. Right. Like you can if you want to, but it could be wasted prayer. Go ahead. Proverbs 28 and 9. We get out. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Which was what we were trying to read to you earlier with Deuteronomy 7 and 6. You didn't want to hear it. Read. Even his prayer shall be an abomination. God says because you don't want to hear his law and keep his law and stop sinning, then he how hates your stop, prayer. God says he hates your prayer if you're going to continue in sin. Repent. 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 Now, get Acts 5 and 29. It's because he said, I came from my own. Faith alone is Wait, wait. Faith alone is Okay then, so it's not faith alone. Right, it is my faith. If the no, Bible says it's faith, you believe that everything is how is wait? How is it faith alone? If you just admit it, faith without works is dead. Your faith isn't moving nothing if it's by itself. Right. You can believe all you want, but if you don't act on your belief, then you're not doing anything. So it's that's not faith enough. No, that's so not that's faith what I'm saying. alone. So he gets saved just believing in the word of God, believing in Jesus and doing what it says. Right? Okay, we agree that's with that. Yeah. We agree with that. See, I, there's a lot of things that, that, like what you guys say about the Israelites. It's true. God came to the Israelites. Yes, God sir. God saved in salvation. He's always been here for He's the Israelites. Like, but he came for us as well. And that's what I want. See, that's the message of our love of Jesus. I'm going to read this and I want you to explain it. I'm going to read this and I want you to explain it. Acts 5 and 29. Bring it out. New Testament. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Peter and the other apostles, the apostles, disciples, heads of the church, the leaders of the body of faith, we ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. You agree with that? Read. The God of our fathers. The raised, God of the Israelites' fathers, because he's not the God of everybody. All right. All right. Raised up Jesus. Raised up Jesus. Whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. He was crucified. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. To be a prince and a savior. You agree that Jesus Christ is a prince and a savior. You think he's the savior for everyone. Let's read what the Bible says. Right. A prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Why are no other nations mentioned here in the New Testament? It says he's coming to grant repentance to the nation of Israel. Who was he speaking to Israel? Okay, when, when was he, was... he was before the judgment of the Israelites because they were jealous. They were like, they thought there is no salvation because they, they knew the law. There is no salvation for anybody else. You know the Jews despised the But Gentiles. that's what Jesus said. Exactly. Jesus said and there's no salvation for Peter nobody else. He despised the Gentile until he saw a vision. A Gentile. You're talking about Cornelius. Yeah. Cornelius was an Israelite. That's right. right. He, was. he was a Gentile. Why do you think, why do you think, prove it. Why do you think God told them, let's go to Acts 10. What I cleaned is clean. He wouldn't told them. Nope. He was already Look, clean. He already, he already answered it. Right. Go to Acts 10, 28. You get uh, Joel, what is that? 3 and 21? 3. No, I don't, we don't need that. Acts 10 and 28. Yeah. And he said, this is the whole point of the vision. What? Is he speaking about that? Needs to be cleaned that wasn't cleansed. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. One of another nation. Because the Israelites were split into many nations. Yeah. They were. They said that. They could be citizens of other nations. Yeah, they can. But, but just like you 
who don't know who you are in the Bible. I know. No, you just called yourself a Gentile. Right. And that's historically inaccurate. I'm a son of God. I know who I am. I'm How are you a son of God if the Israelites are the sons of God and nobody else has ever been called the son of God right. except his chosen lineage? believes in me obesity. See, that's what the Bible There's says. There's other you heathens guys don't preach believe the Bible. in God. Read this. The Bible. Keep going. That's what the Bible says. He who believes in me will be considered or, sons of God. Okay. So All right. Like All right. Or come unto one of another nation, right? But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean, right? It says, God showed me that I should call not any man common or unclean. Read. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as... Okay, so this is a vision about God, other nations... Which I already said, Israel has been scattered into all other nations, calling themselves Mexicans, Greeks, Romans, Corinthians, right? These are all still Israelites. Read. Joel. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read. Joel 3, verse, I'm going to start at 20. Bring it out. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. These are Israelites, read. Really. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. So That's right. in the vision of Peter in Acts 10, what was cleansed that was not cleansed fulfills the prophecy that the Israelites would be cleansed. You gotta show me a prophecy where these other nations of people would not be cleansed. Give me Acts 2 and 5. What was your question or comment? So, Can you read verse 36? It's not wrong or it's corrupted. See, the Bible, throughout the whole Bible, everything is perfect. The New Testament is also a color of the Old Wait, 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 wait. You believe that every word in this Bible is the word of God? Why? Because it's all been written by men inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, See, by believing that, that there is things written that So when Job's wrong, wife, when Job's wife told Job to curse God and die, you believe that that's something we should follow? <laughs> He told her to do it. What the I'm, enemy you're, you're not a listening to what to I'm do. saying. The enemy says, you're not listening to what I'm saying. If everything in here is thus saith the Most High or the Word of God, then that has to be true. It's the truth. The Word of God. So we should true. curse God and die, because that's in the Bible. See, the, the, the Satan says like they say that the Eve lied and did this, and, the, and it showed, showed us the consequences of what happened. But now that we're gonna do it, okay, but it's the truth. So but what I'm saying that is, do that, what I'm saying happen. is, we have to differentiate what is the word of God, what are His commandments, and what He wants, versus the other stuff we find in the Bible, whether it just be events that happen, or conversations that happen, or mistakes from people, right? Everything is true. Everything Sometimes. is true. So according to the verse he read, God shows no favoritism. Was there no, favoritism? Was there favoritism? Fears, he fears and does what's right. That's the one that Okay, wait, so you're contradicting what he said. If you just said he shows favoritism to believers and those that love and obey him, then there's still favoritism. No right. favoritism. It said favoritism. You say no shows what favoritism, but then it shows what accepts from every nation. Accepts from every nation. What does diaspora mean? It means scattered, right? You go into the etymology of the word diaspora, and even though it's just supposed to tell you the origination of this word, it includes the Israelites. Because from the beginning, God told them, if you disobey me, I'm going to scatter you into every nation under heaven. All right. Which happened. Which is why he's saying, every, all those in other nations, those that believe, the Israelites scattered into all these nations. Give me what you got? Acts 10 and 36. Go. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Oh. Read it from the top from where he had it. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, 
of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. That does not mean he doesn't show favoritism. That means he's not partial in judgment. God. Read. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Because the Israelites you were scattered every into every nation by slavery. Did you say Read. Every the word which God sent unto the children of Israel. This is the word that God sent to the children of Israel in every nation. Read. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Give me Acts 2 and 25. The Israelites were scattered into every nation. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. To prove that. Hold on. To prove that. God says... Hold on, hold on. We have to build understanding before anybody speaks. I need to let you know why I'm telling you Cornelius is an Israelite before you try to rebuttal. All right, fine. You can rebuttal without me telling you what you're rebuttaling to. Go ahead. I was trying to help you out. What do we know this about? Go ahead. But it's giving space. So, you know, there was this man, right, Cornelius, who prayed to God, even though he was a Gentile. He, he gave the good deeds and good things. That's what uh, the verse says. He feared the Lord. He feared the Lord and did this. All right, so the vision, right? The context, we can summarize it. God, and the vision while he was looking for God, because you know when you look for God, God can visit you and give you answers, right? Because God is faithful and he loves us so much. Loves who? He loves us. Loves he, who? he loves the world. The world? Why does, he, why does it say he hates Esau and all his sons and daughters? Right. Why does it say in the Bible for God to love the world? Why does it say that? I love to get there. I love to get there. So, because if you're going to say he hates people, why don't we say he loves the world? Hold on, hold on. You just said the Bible doesn't contradict itself, right? Yeah. You just said that God said he loves the world. Yeah. Romans 9 and 13. Hold on. Let me finish what I was going to say. So, basically, right? So, he got a vision and said God came to him. Right? And then an angel appeared to him and tell him, go and ask Peter. Or, and he will give you words. It's the truth. He will give you the words of what you need to hear. And he went. And then, because that's why God gave him that vision. Because he knew that a Gentile, Jews hated. They couldn't even go into a household because it was abomination to What them. is this Jew? An Israelite. No. Those selected no. by an Israelite from three of 12 tribes. That's right. All Israelites are not Jews. Right. Well, well, so, that's three, three I, tribes I, can I be considered Jews. Well, he was a chosen one, right? What from were the other people. nine tribes called? He was from the they were called Gentiles, right? Yeah. So were the Jews that stopped following these laws and was living like other nations, which right. is what Cornelius, for the most part, was. He was a Gentile, but he was an Israelite, just like you're a Mexican, but you're an Israelite. He wasn't because he didn't have that descent okay. by the blood. Okay. Go so, ahead. So then he came, and then when he got that vision, telling him, "I have already clean what was not clean." And then he went over there and he said, no, he preaching. said, this is when I'm cleansing what has not been cleaned. Who fulfilled that? We already read that prophecy was about Israelites, nobody else. You have to prove that that prophecy was fulfilled in Gentiles because it doesn't say that. No, it doesn't. Because that's what was the ministry of God. He went to the Gentiles. They say Peter ministry was for the Israelites. He was for the people. Fortified him in the faith, fortified okay, him so the Corinthians. And then Paul wrote, Paul, a, Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians. The Corinthians, in your understanding, are Gentiles. Well, I'm not, I don't even talk about just the Corinthians. But that's, that's, he went to Asia, on, he went to deal different places. One, one thing at a time. Paul went to the Corinthians because the Corinthians was part of his ministry. You're saying Paul went to the Gentiles, right? Yeah, right. So the Corinthians are Gentiles, right? According to what well, you believe. He went to different places. I'm asking you, the Corinthians he went to, are they Gentiles or, or are they Israelites? The Corinthians? Well, I can't answer. I'm not going to answer something just to prove my point. What are you talking about? Well, I'm just saying that he went to Gentiles. I'm not talking about Corinthians. I'm talking he went to Gentiles. That's who he went to. He, he, he preached in synagogues. He preached to Israelites as well. But, okay. his, but his main ministry was for the Gentiles. The, his so I'm not saying that maybe the Corinthians the were for Israelites. And I'm not going to answer something that I may not know. Okay, who were the Galatians? Who, who did Paul write a letter to that you believe are Gentiles? Right. Well, he said he went to the Gentiles. He went to other nations. Okay, who are... What does Gentile mean? Let's start there again. What are Gentiles? What is the, what God called the other people? Have Israelites ever been called Gentiles? Yeah. Have Israelites ever been referred to, called, labeled Gentiles? 
Yes. So how do we differentiate Israelites that are Gentiles from natural born heathens that are Gentiles that are not Israelites? God loves you. Let's, okay, let's get to that. <laughs> I just want to say this. That the message that God has brought is a message of love. He said he whoever comes Are you serious? Are you serious? Because he brought salvation. Isn't that love? That we deserve the biggest punishment. We deserve the biggest punishment for our sin. I know last time, I think, I, I don't really remember me. I was with my brother. We debated for like a good two hours. Okay. I don't really remember. But I remember you guys don't really believe in hell, right? You guys, you guys believe in everlasting life. That there's a heaven or a hell. See, that's what God came to. Wait, so do you believe that there's a, a place where people will burn forever? What is Hades? What is Hades? He, he, in the Bible, he even mentioned it. He even told that to the... Okay, what's the, the Greek? I mean, what's the, the Hebrew word for hell? What is it? I'm asking you. I don't know, but I know there's a hell. It's Sheol, right? Sheol, yes, yeah, it's a hole. No, Sheol is the grave or death. <laughs> it's not speaking about no place where you're tormented in fire forever. Right. It's just the it grave. Okay, so Jesus went to hell? He descended to the deepest parts of hell without a shadow. What is hell? Because Christians will say hell is separation from God. You're telling me there was a point in time where Jesus was separated from God? What do you think in the cross? He said, why have you, like the call or something like that. Said, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken me. So he could die on the cross. But he, but he resurrected. That's how powerful Jesus is. That's how powerful the power Let's of the Let's get John Spirit 3 and 16. I and that's, what, that's, that's our point. faith. That is our faith. Jesus, that like he resurrected from the dead. And, and this is the thing. Like, Was he the only one resurrected from the dead? Who? Nazareth resurrected from the dead. Who? Who? Lazarus? Who else? There was a few people. Okay, so what's your point? He came and died, and he lived the perfect life, and was the perfect sacrifice. Why do you think okay. they call him that? Sacrifice for who? Apparently, it's for, for the Israelites. I mean, it was for all of them. That's what he said. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believes that's John three and sixteen. Let's, do it. Let's, do it. Let's start at one. Who was this a conversation <laughs> by? Jesus and who was having the conversation in John three? John chapter 3 from the top. Bring it out. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He, this is a conversation between two Jews, Jesus and Nicodemus. Right. Read. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. So all the Israelites did not reject Jesus. This man is going to learn from Jesus. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And believe in Jesus wholeheartedly. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Who did Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness for? And what was that serpent for? What was the purpose of the serpent? Of the serpent that Moses lifted up in the wilderness. Number uh, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, right? He was a he was a teacher. Nicodemus was a master of the law, of the word of God. Okay. He was a very master. He was very intelligent of what the word, and he knew the law. And that's why he came to Jesus, cause Jesus was preaching a lot of different things. Preaching, not a lot of different things, but he was preaching the love and salvation. And he said, "How?" I think he told him, "How would I inherit heaven?" Or something like that. Right. And he said, "You have to be born again." Right. And he was like, "How? Me being old, am I gonna go right. in my womb with my mother?" Right. And he's like, he, he told him, he was basically told him, you don't understand what I'm yeah, trying to say. Yeah. Because see, the word of God is so spiritual. Okay, Everything before is we so get spirit, there, spirit. right? Before we get off track, the it's question, true. hold on, the question was, it says, even as the Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. So we have to understand, it's giving us context right here. What is the context of this serpent being lifted up in the wilderness? Read. Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. Bring it out. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Right. And they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So, the Israelites were dying in the wilderness because God sent poisonous snakes to go and kill them. Right? Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, but we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Right. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Right. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. This is that fiery serpent that was lifted up. And set it upon a pole. Set it on a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So this was a device that Moses used to save the Israelites. The purpose was, I'm going to lift this up so these people who are being afflicted can be saved from their affliction. Right? Who are the people being saved by using this fiery serpent? The Israelites. Right. So, go back to John 1 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What does even so mean? As, just as, right? Just as this serpent was lifted up to save the children of Israel, even so, the same way Jesus Christ has to be lifted up to save the children of Israel. Read. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That whosoever believeth in him shall, perish, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Acts 2 and 21, what you got? You got Acts 45? Give me, yeah, Isaiah 45, somebody give me Acts 2 and 21. Whosoever, you guys believe that's everybody who believes. Okay, so if I say everyone or whosoever, that's automatic, automatically speaking about everybody that's alive that has no context of the audience who I'm speaking to. Okay, so <laughs> if I am a teacher in a classroom and I tell the classroom, you guys did great on your quiz today, we're gonna have a everybody is gonna everybody in here we're gonna have a pizza party next week. Am I speaking to the whole school or just those in the classroom? The classroom, not everybody. But I still use words like whosoever, all, everyone. So let's read Acts 2 and 21. Hold on. Acts 2 and 21. Bring it up. And it came to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You guys agree with that? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes? Read it from the top. Acts 2 and 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Read. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. This is, the audience is still Israel. Is that that time Give me Acts 13. That's why Jesus came and told us. Why do you think he told us? What, okay, wait, wait, wait. What's the... You say God loves the world, whosoever, this is speaking about everybody. What does the word world there mean in John 3, 16? Jesus said, go to every nation, every person. I already Preach explained it. Preach the person. Why? Because it's how does faith come from? It's how does faith come from? Right here. Hearing the word of God, right? So, okay. So, this is the thing. When you preach the word of God, the person gets faith. And when they get faith, they invoke the name of Jesus because they get revealed by Jesus. They get that revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord, and they can invoke the name of Jesus. When it, when it says that, be whoever invokes the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then a little bit under it says, but how will they believe if nobody preaches? How will they invoke the name of who they don't know who they're invoking? And it starts saying like that. Or how will they preach if they're sent? See, this is the thing. God sent us to preach to every person, to every nation. And I remember last time we went to every preacher, and you're like, well, you talked to animals, you told me last time. See, we're all living beings. We all have the spirit of God. Okay, so Israelites many times in the Bible were called his creature, separate from other creatures. They were given that label. Israelites were given his creature as a label. That's, he's always, look, give me uh, Isaiah 45. Isaiah what does that word world mean in John 3, 16? Anybody can answer. Does it mean all the inhabitants of the earth? Yes or no? No, it doesn't. The word is cosmos. What does cosmos mean? It means a governing body. Just like sea world, the football world, the sports world. That's not everybody. I got a Read. Isaiah. Isaiah 45 verse 14. No. Thus said the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia. Egypt and Ethiopia are two nations. And of the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee, and chains shall they come over. It says these three nations are going to come over to the Israelites, bowing down and in chains. In 
tame shall they come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee. Right. Saying, surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Right. Verily thou art a God that hideth himself, O God of Israel. Calling him the God of Israel, because he was always and still is only the God of Israel. We the right. Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. It says these other nations are going to be ashamed and confounded. Read. All of them. All of them. They shall go to confusion together. Right. That are makers of idols. This is the definition of your hell in the Bible. These other nations are going into hell. Read. But Israel. But the nation of Israel. Shall be saved in the Lord. This is salvation for Israel. Prophecy spoken about the salvation for Israel and the damnation of these other people with an everlasting salvation everlasting salvation is for the nation of israel he shall not be ashamed nor confounded these other nations are going to be ashamed and confounded israel he will not be a world without end god calls israel a world without end a world that he loves that's what he's speaking about in john 3 16. Right. everlasting salvation world that I love, that's still speaking about Israel. you got to show me somewhere else in the Bible, a uh, second and third witness, that this world is speaking about everybody because it's not. Right. Cosmos isn't even the word you would use to speak to everybody in the world. What are you talking about? See, because every man will be standing for a while. Every man. Okay, I like that. And rewarded for your works, right? And so what are these white people going to be rewarded for? What are these white people going to be rewarded for? Right. What are their consequences and rewards right. for rape, robbery, and murder of the entire world? Right. Are they going to be saved after they've destroyed the earth? No, they're not. Exactly. My point. This, this, this white this people way? are going to hell. All praises All praise. to the most high. <laughs> I just asked you. I just wait. I asked you. What are white people going to receive for the rape, rob, murder, and destruction of the earth? You said hell. Those who did that. That's white people. See, I'm a Mexican. I could go kill somebody. I could go somebody. And if I get lost and I don't repent, I'll go to hell too. Okay. See, this is okay, this is cool. the difference. It's my sin. We're all sinners. But you're saying no, that you're, you're, you're claiming this is by individuals. This is not what about national judgment? Right. That's here on earth. That's where earthly things, when the Lord brings punishment. Okay, so God is going to judge these other nations as nations, and white people's judgment is death and slavery. Right. See, it's because when there's consequences, right. there's consequences. We feel about when we do the right thing. Right. There's consequences. Right. right. See, and there's been. Israel will always sin. Will always, God will tell them something, they will do something. That's what Give me Lamentations for. So many bad things will happen because that was a national judgment. Right. What, what happened to Solomon? So what was, what what was Israel's judgment every time they sinned against God? What was Israel's judgment? What was their punishment? Death and slavery. That's, that's so that's black Hispanics America. and Native Americans have been killed and enslaved in this nation for their past sins. you are your forefathers have to pay for that because that, those are your sins. Right. Give me lamentations. Yeah, that's what sins are for. Go ahead. Who did slavery send to the white people, right? What are you talking about? Who did slavery start by? The Arabs. Arabs. Okay, and they got to go into slavery right. too. Right. right. And it didn't well, like, start with Arabs. That you're that it didn't start with Arabs. Hold on. It didn't start with Arabs. The Egyptians took us into slavery. The Babylonians took us into slavery. The Assyrians took us into slavery. Who said that? I just named three different people than white people. What are you talking about? Egyptians are white. No, they're so, not. Okay, so they're the, black. What, they're what the I'm, what I'm to, though, South Sudanese people. What I'm people. getting to, though, is you're saying that white people are the people that are raping and that are. Just because those are the people y'all trying to save. 
We're saving everything. I, I just came to tell you, bro. You, can you get can't save everything. Look, first he can go get saved. God is the only one that can. Okay, where in the Bible does it say he's coming? Because we just read many verses that says they're going to die. Right. God, pro they don't God pronounced they don't genocide on the whole nation of these white people. The okay, God. then. So they're going to receive that punishment. Okay, so, so what if a white guy actually hears the word of God? What if he listens to it and repents? Wait, wait, wait hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you go against prophecy? Can God speak something and say something is going to happen and then you change what God said is going to happen? Can prophecy go out void? No. No. So if G if the Bible says, thus saith the Most High, that these crackers are going into slavery and then be completely wiped out, how can you go against that? Right. It says they're going to die. What? It says that hell is created for the devil. Which is not, you're not. Lucifer and the devil are two different entities. Right. Okay, my bad. Lucifer okay. is. Was Lucifer an was an. In, no. Lucifer was a man that lived on the earth called Istanbul the Third. He's the king of Tyre. Right. Lucifer only shows up one time in the Bible, and that's in Isaiah. He is not the devil. That's Christianity. No, you're convoluting two individual entities and making them one. What are you talking about? Because if you want to be saved, you're Lucifer, Lucifer was an angel, right? No, yes, show, me, show me in the Bible where it says Lucifer is Lucifer an angel. Was an angel. That, show me well, in the Bible well, where it says well, Lucifer well, is an angel. How they going to be in hell? How they going to be in hell? Lucifer disobeyed God. Can you show me in the Bible Lucifer where it says that? God. Can you show me in the Bible where it says that? <laughs> show me where it says any angel disobeyed God. <laughs> you don't even know what angel means. What? So a man can't be an angel? No? Are you sure? What does angel mean? It means messenger. God called him Psalms 103 verse 20 Bring it up Bless the Lord who is angels His angels Who excel in strength Excel in strength Who do his word Who do his word Heeding the voice of his word The angels do not disobey God There are evil angels And there are benevolent angels That God uses for their job God sends evil angels to do their job. Right. They rebel. Hold on. Why? How? <laughs> that's that's not even that doesn't make sense biblically. You're taking these Christian ideologies right. and interpolating them into the Bible right. and you can't even find a verse that says that. Right. Look for it. We've been asking you to. I, I still want lamentation. Lamentations 5 and 7. Bring it out. Our fathers have sinned and are not. Our forefathers sinned against God and now they're dead. Right. And we have borne their iniquity. And we have to be punished for our forefathers' sins. That's why black, Hispanics, and natives had to go through slavery right. and oppression and death and destruction and robbery right. and rape, right? Because we're suffering from our forefathers' sins. So if we, God's chosen people, have to suffer for our forefathers' sins, what makes anyone think that these crackers can escape their forefathers' sins when they have never paid for it? Right. right. We've paid for our sins. We're still paying for it. You're going to tell me as God's chosen people, he's going to beat my ass like this and the people he says he hates are going to get away from it? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Are you are you speaking your natural language? You can speak. What? Do you know what Mexican's original language was? Right. No, hell no. no. Espanol <laughs> is a European language. Right. That's your slave master's language. They beat that into you. Right. And your forefathers would have been ashamed 
for you to say or claim a white man's language when they died and they fought for your nation. Right. Saved Save from what? Save from what? I'll show you how it... From hell. From punishment and hell. That's why we're speaking about slavery. Because we're in hell right now. That's right. right. What are you talking about? All sin against God and been separated. We all have sin. Our fathers, black, white, Mexican. You keep Chinese. the commandments now. You repented. You keep the commandments. I repented as a little born Christian, like what Jesus said. You may be born again by the Spirit. And I was born again. My life I was, I'm a young man. I could be all there partying, oh, listening to music, oh, fornicating. I'm 20 years old. 20 I had, years I had old. a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ. Okay, so you keep the commandments, is what I'm asking. Yes, I try to. You try to. Do you know the commandments? Let's start there. Do you know the commandments? You shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall love the Lord with all your heart. You shall Are love you your reciting neighbor. the ten? Huh? You're reciting the ten? Oh, well, the first ten? How Jesus resonated. You will love your God with all your heart. This is the law, and all the law is conformed with this. You shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And see, we, that's the main thing. We have to, we have to love God. Okay. And we have to truly see if we truly love God. Okay. Because if you don't love that's your right. neighbor, if you don't love the person, that's right. you don't love God. That's okay. Right. You don't believe nationality is important in the Bible? Well, honestly, what the internet what matters is, I feel like I don't have a lot of So the question again is, do you keep the commandments? You love God. How do you show love for God? Right. Following his commandments. Which are what? What are his commandments? Okay. You're, you're saying generalized statements that I agree with, but what are his commandments? Can I get tattoos if I want to? That's against the law. That's against his commandments. Okay. Can I shave off my beard if I want to? Sometimes I do, right? That's against his commandments, so right. I go with what God wants, regardless of what I want, right? What is that shirt made out of? I'm asking you, uh, shell shirt, huh? Cotton. cotton, you're guessing, you don't know? Who knows what their shirt is made out of? 100%. Because the laws of God are important to us, right? And he says we have to wear certain things. So we keep the commandments. Right. What's the punishment for sin? What happened to What you got, Romans 6? We have all broken it. That's what we all been guilty. That's what I said. This is Matthew 5 and 19. Bring it out. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so. Will, will everybody be equal in heaven? No. So there's a hierarchy. There's going to be people that God favors and in, in a higher position and people that are under them. It's more of like, uh, I mean, he, he told us in uh, John. That's, he said, there's no greater problem. Okay. I mean, he, he, like you said, the rewards of people get the rewards of how we're not saying what he's saying. God will reward us for our works, right? Right. Our works that we did for Jesus. Right. Okay. I said in heaven, there's different systems. There's different. There's a hierarchy. Depending on your sacrifice, you did for God. There's going to be rulers who obey God. There's going to be a middle class, and there's going to be slaves. Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, uh -huh. and shall teach men so. If you break the least of the commandments, not even the main ones. If you break the least of the commandments, and you teach other people that it's okay. That you don't have to know the commandments, you don't have to study, so you can then practice them, read. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. Read. Well, well, who's, like hell. read. But whosoever shall do and teach them, 
the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The only way you can do and teach them is if you know them yourself. Right. So you're on the track right now to be maybe middle class, if that, because you don't even know the commandments. What? Are you serious? I'm not chasing the Bible. What reward are you running for? Right. Serve Jesus. That's how you serve Jesus, though. Learn the truth. They can repent. They can respond to God and get to know Him. How would they believe nobody preaches them? Hold on. Hold on. How would they believe nobody preaches them? Hold on. 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 That's what Jesus did. He okay, so I'm saying the same thing, right. but only one of us is living it. Right. right. Your light is dim and blown out right now because you're not keeping the commandments. You say you love God. I ask you, how do you prove that? You say keep the commandments, but you can't demonstrate the commandments you're keeping. What did Paul say? What did Paul say? We live by the grace. We live by the grace of God. He said we are no longer. Okay, so you're, frust you're cool right. with frustrating the commandments, frustrating right. grace of God. Right. No. Just because I don't, we... I don't sin. I'm not like, oh, uh, God is grace, I'm going to go do some good. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Does he pork? Yeah, I eat pork. <laughs> oh, what did Jesus say he's going to do to those that are eating pork when oh he comes back? And then what was the vision that God showed Peter? We just read that that's speaking about well, cleaning men, well, not meat. Well, well, what are you talking well, about? But well, well, why did he show him animals? Because those animals were... It's a similar to. It's an analogy people. for people. But he wanted to show he cleaned that and he cleaned those. Give me Isaiah 66 and 15. That's what he showed the animal was because they were unclean to them. Okay, so this and is an end time prophecy about Jesus Christ coming back the second time and how he treats people eating pork still. Read. Isaiah 66 and 15. Bring it out. For behold, the Lord will come with you're fire. You're trying to save everybody and Jesus Christ is about to say you're not, you can't even save yourself yeah. because you're, you're not obedient. Right. right. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. He's coming to kill a whole bunch of people, read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with our flesh. He's going to come down here and sit up at the coffee table at Starbucks with you and sit there and ask you and plead with you, why are you still eating that pork? Can you put it down for me? I would really appreciate you if you stop eating that, right? This, the time for conversation is over because you're right. abusing grace, read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many, read. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh. Eating swine's flesh. And the abominations. And other abominations. And the mouse. And the mouse. Shall be consumed together. Jesus says he's going to kill these people who are still breaking the commandments like eating pork. So it's not okay. You need to stop doing that and actually repent. Alright, so you're going to stop eating pork tonight. I'm not going to eat no more, no ham sandwiches, no bacon in the morning, no nothing. The okay, so you're convicted now. You're not going to do it no more. Is the Holy Spirit convicted? Whoa, has the Holy, Holy Spirit convicted you? I'm asking you right now. Not really. Because so, I'm telling you. Because so you don't I, have I the Holy Spirit. Be, I, you I, don't I, have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit convicts you to keep the commandments. Give me Ezekiel 36. But I want to say Paul. He said, Paul is your Savior. Right. Yeah. Paul was crucified. He just went to Jesus Christ, who is supposed to be your Lord Savior. And he said he's going to kill you regardless of what you believe about Paul. Jesus, in the heart of Mary, he's breaking the biggest heart of the Lord. All right. In the Bible. And I'll be happy little what is written. Or, or if, it don't, if, it, if it's not aligned with what he says, what Jesus says, yes, throw it in the trash. If it's, if they're saying two different things, who are you going with? You're going to go, how? You're a double-minded man. Right. If you're trying to go with both. You don't understand that this Bible is How, how are you going to, how? 
what? That's you that's say, not perfect. That's first, a contradiction. You told us earlier the Bible don't contradict exactly. itself. Exactly. So everything in the You're Bible the is contradiction. Perfect. Hey. I'm not saying anything out of my own mouth or what so, I'm saying. So, so if Jesus says don't eat the pork, God says don't eat the pork, and you believe that Paul says it's okay. Right. You're going with a man, and we read earlier that we're we ought to obey God, God rather than men. Show me another it. witness that say the same thing that Paul say that we can't eat pork. Since I can give less you... beef, those who are not convicted of what they eat. Uh, hey, that's what he said. Uh, that's what the Bible said. But he said if your brother falls, so my friend, for example, if you if, if your faith belittles, if you if you like give me me of me eating pork harms you in your spiritual sense, I will I have to stop eating pork. Okay. For that so sense. For you told me you earlier my, you told me earlier you. that you love God and loving God, proof of that is keeping the commandments. Right. One of the commandments is not to eat pork. It's not even a hard one. No, There's so many other better you know in in the swine there are enzymes called putrescine and cadaverine that break down your own body. Right? Putrescine the share the same root word with putrid or a disgusting smell and rotting flesh cadavering which is a dead body is what it does to you it kills your body not even to mention the thousands of parasites you can never cook out of pork these things have practical applications and you're throwing out the spiritual applications the practical applications to follow paul who you don't even understand Right. What you got? I have a question. Question. And it's not necessarily Okay. You good. You said that you did a tattoo, right? Right. Right. I'm glad you people. I'm curious that I'm wondering, right? You got a tattoo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't say that. I asked you what the punishment would be. What's the punishment you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Right. So I agree with that. Now, I got these. That's easy. Hold on, real quick. Let me answer this question. Give me a uh, wink. No, wink at it. Good question. Seems like you at least want to know what path I'm on. What the right path well, I, is. I want to see what you're saying. I wanna, okay. I'm not, I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna judge you based off of what you're saying. Right? Why not? You but should. I'm right. not gonna judge you. God, God, God created men with faculties to judge, to carry out His judgment. Like, okay. We are allowed to judge, or we are judging righteous. Right. 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 By me, not doing the no, I could be wrong, but your judgment has to be in line with God's judgment, which is why I'm telling you pork is wrong, right because that's God's judgment. It's not my opinion. Right. Give me that. Acts 17 and 30. Bring it up. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. So before you know what's right and wrong, God is looking at you like a child that doesn't know what right and wrong is. That's right, give me Hebrews 10 and 26. Once you learn, you got Hebrews 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully, sin after you already know what's wrong and what's right, what the commandments are. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, you already know what the commandments are. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Jesus didn't come to die for you and you will die because you continue to live a life of sin. Give me John 2. Uh, sin born of the devil. You're, you're asking me a question or are you going to allow me to ask? Why did he die? To grant us a chance to repent, which is what grace is. Okay, but he says that sacrifice don't mean nothing if you're going to continue to sin. So if you walk away here and you continue to eat that pork, there is no repentance and Jesus did not die for that. 
It says it's like you putting him back on the cross every time you put pork on your plate. Because now you know pork is wrong. Read. Keep going on. But a certain, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fearing indignation which shall devour the adversary, right? Verse 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy. So the dietary law is found under what Moses gave the Israelites, right? If you are convicted of a crime that makes you guilty and is punishable by death, we only need two or three witnesses to come to trial and prove that you were committing that crime. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses, right? Of how much sore punishment is going to be even worse. Suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot the Son of God. So Jesus Christ came back, came on the scene, and told us we have to. possibility that you walk away and you continue to eat pork. That means there is no sacrifice for you. And it's going to be even worse. But if you know what sin is, if you know not to eat pork and you eat it anyways, you're abusing grace. Exactly. So you're worthy of death. I'm asking you, what is going to be your choice when you walk away from you? The Holy Spirit guides you to all truth, right? Amen. The Holy Spirit guides you to all truth. The Holy Spirit convicts you to keep these commandments. Yes. Right. And deny you. your flesh and deny right. that taste of pork that you have. Right. I know I've been born again. I know the most of the No. How, how are you born again? Life changed. So you repent. You were converted. What converts you? Jesus. The laws of God convert you. Right. right. Okay, so if you're telling me you're still there's still a possibility that you're eating sin, you have not been born again or converted. Right. Have you said that? Yes. You, I got tattoos, have, have which been, is his question. I have tattoos. Have you been born again? Yes. Because so, I'm not doing the same things that I was yeah, doing right. before. You you, you which is not you what you're born, telling you me. Born. No. Hell no. Do you, no, no. If I know that God told me not to do it, I don't do it. Right. You don't have to convince me. I convince me. You. Your mind convicts you of yourself. You know, you you're know not you even convinced in your own mind. You Give me. Uh, no, uh, uh, and I'm not trying to like, oh, I don't want to eat pork. No. I'm just saying. That's what if you're we, saying. If we snow, I, I, if the Lord truly convicts me, I'm telling you, if I get out of here and like, if it's, why the work of the Holy Spirit will you guys do? Because if you guys have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is gonna convict me, and I'll truly like, Lord, if I come Which out here, and, and the you, Lord you tells don't me, have it. and the Lord tells me, you don't have, you don't, you don't, you, you don't need a report, and if He convicts me, I have to obey. But I'm telling you, I know I've been born again. I know I've been to the fruit by my testimony. I know how I used to live my old life before. I know how I've been. I know how I speak in the Bible. I know how the Lord has been transforming me, how He's been working in me, because that's the fruit, and the Bible says that the works of what God does in you. And, if, and I know the Spirit of God is with me. The, the Lord has been with me. The Lord, I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus. I've spoken in tongues. It's a Jesus. And then if the Lord comes, and He's been guiding me. And if, if I come out of here and He convicts me, He tells me, Oh, you don't need to report. Then He hasn't convicted me of it. And that's and then Paul would speak about that. Like he had, Jesus cleaned it. Jesus cleaned it. Jesus cleaned what? He cleaned everything. What? What are you talking about? He cleaned the animals. He cleaned all that. So he changed the laws of God. Right. He cleaned. He changed the laws of God. All right. So let's go back. Gentiles didn't have salvation. They, they still don't. don't. They, they, they still do. don't. They do, my friend. You yeah. haven't shown me that. You, I, I told you. Well, I told no, you, you did. You, you, you told me. I have but you haven't shown me in the Bible. Right. I told you what Peter did. He said, and, he, and then when the Holy Spirit fell and they were all speaking in tongues, he said, well, Who were those? Who were those people? Cornelius and those group of people that he called. In Acts 2, when they came to Jerusalem for Pentecost, and all these people from all these different places understood each other's language. Who were those people from different nations? Those were all Israelite people. That's right. I'm saying I, Israelite people have salvation. I'm not saying that. And I and know Gentiles don't. And, and who are going to be? Who are going to be? Who said, are going to be the Israelite slaves? Right. 
in the kingdom of heaven if everybody has salvation. He said, "Jano, I is There is no more." Are you serious? Yeah, he did. Are you? <laughs> Revelation thirteen and ten. <laughs> this is Jesus Christ speaking and telling people that they're going to have slaves. It doesn't matter. You just said there's not going to be any slaves. And Jesus says, "Are you serious?" Give me Isaiah 14 and 1. You're talking about the millennium. When Jesus brings the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven and on earth. other nations. All right, but I'm other talking nations about the kingdom are going to be slaves. I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. The, the heaven. The, the thousand years is going to be here for a thousand. Basically going to be heaven on earth for a thousand years. Right? The millennium. So you, give me Daniel 2 and 44. Daniel 7 and 18, I mean. You believe that there's going to be paradise on earth and then people are going to go back into this sinful world. Because why was it He said it's in Isaiah. It says the lion and the beast and the evil be together. The, the lion and, and you, the beast. You're the telling me that there's going to be a time where after that time of peace is going to be a time of turmoil and war again. Yeah. Even though the Bible says they're not going to learn war anymore, no one's going to make them afraid or take them into captivity anymore. There's going to be an everlasting covenant of peace. You're telling me everlasting doesn't mean everlasting anymore. Yeah, Daniel chapter 7 verse 18 Bring it up. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom And possess the kingdom forever Even forever and ever The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is going to be possessed by the Israelites forever and ever Not no, no thousand we're not years gonna lose the kingdom. Because look After the thousand years We're not years, making any we, sense we're gonna go back What's your name? Heaven. We're going to go Jorge. back to heaven I was close <laughs> We're going to go back to heaven But why was there peace? Because all right, so it after, says after everlasting the peace. Yeah. So, You're saying it's not everlasting, which would mean God is a liar. He is not a liar. Then how is it just one thousand years? Well, that's the millennium. But you are gonna have. We're gonna. Have the Bible says that the sinner won't have peace. Those who rebel against God won't have peace. And they're gonna be slaves in the kingdom to those that obey God. They sin the but you're not obeying God, so are you going to be? That is my battle. And this is our strength to battle. And I'm trying to help you win this battle. Right, right. Stop eating pork. Right. We have to live for Jesus. We, we do. We do. That's why we all here. Right. And this is the thing. I don't agree with you. Like, what you what guys don't think? you agree with? The, uh, like, of the doctrine. You guys don't preach another religion. You guys are not preaching another religion. You guys are preaching but you a different are. doctrine. I'm speaking the gospel of Jesus. That is the gospel. The gospel is for that the Jesus Israelites. died and he died for his sins and whoever believes in him shall ever love That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. That's what the gospel is. And then Paul, and then Paul said, he said, whoever preaches another gospel from this one, have it as a curse. So, so, this so, is a, see, so this did is a Jesus curse. preach a different gospel than Paul? According to what you're saying now? He preached the same gospel. He preached the same gospel. He repentance. The gospel he said, that Jesus gave us was that the Israelites would be saved from their afflictions and that these other nations are going into slavery under them. That's the gospel that Jesus gave us. Is that he the one you to, believe he in? Went to villages. Is to that the one people. you believe in? He went to villages so, to heal people. He went to villages you're to not answer the question. You're running. You're running. You're running. You're running. You're running. Jesus Christ says part of the gospel for me is that I get to have slaves if, if I'm obedient and I love you. That's part of the gospel. Do you believe that? Or are you teaching something else for the gospel? Yeah, the Lord wants to give me slaves, but I don't believe that. Whoa! And this is the thing. Like, I, it, this, this is all I can tell you guys. This is all I can tell you guys. I do too. I like it. Go ahead. I like you guys. You guys know how to... And I don't mean it to be like, oh, uh, you, know, you guys... You guys go have a debate. You guys talk to people, you know? We have disagreements, right? But at the end of the day... I always learned it like this. We could we could argue with the shape of that lamp, right? Or the moon. Like the I believe it's a square the truth, right? and there's absolute truth. You know, truth. That, and that's what my friend said. We could judge righteousness. And like at the same time, we don't judge anything beforehand. I could judge you be like, oh you guys are totally I'm not wrong. prejudiced person. Yeah. But like I said, we're all gonna stand for I'm racist, I'm not prejudiced. We're all gonna stand for God. And then we will all be judging what we did truly. Where everything hidden will come to light, where our true intentions are part of And that's where everything will come to light. So I can't really tell you this, and I can only really tell you what I know of what is true and what has been revealed. Okay. You could tell me God what is going to judge us. He says He's going to reward us according to our works. How is He going to judge us? What is, he, what is the standard that 
he's going to judge us by? The word of God. So if the word of God says we can't eat pork and you eat pork, what's your judgment? He's going to judge me for that. So if the Bible says you can't steal a man and sell him, what's the judgment for that? Death. Slavery is judgment for that. Death is judgment for that. Right? See, a lot, see, a lot of people in judgment, they will say, Lord, I did this for you. I preached for you. But if you I don't do keep it. my commandments, Jesus is going to deny you and say, I never knew you. Right. I never knew you. And the standard is the commandments. Man, and I never knew you. Right. And then he said he will throw them with yep. the crime and just yep. tell them. That's, that's how it's basically a verse. Weeping and gnashing of teeth is where we're at right now. So he's going to throw them back to earth. That, that, and the slavery. No, we're going to. Where did Jonah go when he said he was in hell? Jonah? Jonah. Jonah. Huh? Jonah said he was in hell. When was Jonah in hell? What was he doing in hell? I'm asking you. You don't know. Well, You're the expert I mean, I in guess, hell. I, 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 I guess it up. Because it's what Jesus said. And that's what he saved us from. Those who believe in him. They, they were, like, that's what he came to die for. Because he loved us so much. See, and this is the thing. I could say, oh, this is hell. I could we say we say a lot of things, but my words doesn't make what I think it is. That's I, right. No, the it, it's, God at the end of the day, we will all see the truth. Jonah, 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 Jonah chapter 2 from the top. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto he's, the Lord. He's crying because of his affliction. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I. Out of the belly of hell, Jonah is crying. Right. Hell is a circumstance on this earth. Right. I'm in hell right now. Come on. According to the Bible, I'm in hell right now. That's what the Bible. Hold on, Jonah just said he was in hell. Like I'm saying, so as Jesus said, like so many people that after they die, and he put so many analogies about them. He put the sheep and the the, the goat, the people that. Who are the sheep and who are the goats? The sheep are those people that serve God. The sheep in the Bible have always been the nation of Israel. Right. Right. The goats exactly. have always been these signifying other people. Chosen, signifying chosen people. Sheep, right? So I'm telling you, and this is why I say we disagree. Well, I believe that God has chosen us those who believe and serve Him and fear them. Because you believe your God, your God is a wishy-washy, uh, change of flip-flop guy. Oh, my God is My God is consistent. My God is the one who sits in the room. My God is the one that will judge everybody. My God is the one that loves everybody. My God is fearfully. My God is a man of war that sends his men into war and allows them to take slaves. That's right. I believe it. Right, but Jesus, well, so Jesus came and started killing him. Jesus came, is coming to bring a sword for war because he's for a those man of war just them. like his dad. For those That's those right. right! You your daddy, son. Yeah. <laughs> for those who repented, who didn't repent, my friend, for those who denied God, those are those are the ones he's going to be slain. Bro. Which of these other nations? You know the Bible says these other nations can't keep the, keep the commandments. Talk about that. Yeah, so it talks about it, it goes to other people, people that don't want to accept God. God said that He gave them a reprobated mind that they can't even knowing that they're they don't feel anything that they're doing. They don't feel convicted of anything for what? So they could get lost. So they could get lost. Exactly. So this is what, but it's not. So they're born just to be destroyed. Right. If they, if they were mad. Wow. If God created for them for the, the purpose will of, of the Father destroying. is for nobody to get lost but have to be saved. See, and honestly, we could, I think we have to go up, and I know we have to teach something about the kindness. Well. No, you good. Yeah, but. Yeah, I appreciate it. We could argue this a lot, but at the end of the day, the one that has victory is Jesus. The one that will reveal to us the truth of God. And I was going to read it, but my phone just died, and it's in it, Exit it, Steel. It, I just want to read it for you. This is, this is the final verse of Exit Steel. And this is all I just want to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, yeah. the conclusion of the whole matter, which is to fear God and keep the commandments. The end of all discussion and everything. everything. That's what I want to leave you right now. What else? Stop eating the bread. <laughs> Amen, brother. That's, that's the end of the discussion for me as well. Okay. That's how we're going to leave you. Well, I'm going to leave you guys tonight. I don't know if you're going to keep going. But it's for fear, for let us hear the conclusion of all matter of anything, right? Of anything. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And the law of God is in the Bible.
and I pled and I sinned and all that thing. Maybe if God really convinced me not to be poor, He will convict me because I know I'll come to the Lord and sin again. If He came down right now and told you, you don't eat pork, I will not eat convict it. you. Amen. Would that be the same as if He read in the Bible that He says by His mouth, "Don't eat pork"? Would you stop? Because I'm trying to save my nigga life. Leviticus 11. That's what Paul said. If you're not, unless if you're not convicted, like what you eat. You believe the Bible is the word of God. Yes. It's just like him talking to you. Amen. Read. Leviticus 11 and 7. Bring it out. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Yes. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. God himself, absent me, just told you not to eat. And that's the truth. During that time, it was unclean. But that's what I'm saying. He cleaned everything. Jesus and says, what, and Jesus says it's still going to be unclean when he comes back. Right. He, he hasn't come back yet. That was the blood of Jesus to clean. Yeah. That, that is the blood. That was the point. It was to cleanse the, the people. Exactly. He cleaned everything. Look, apparently God has, at this point in time, given you that reprobate mind that you were talking about. Right. People. Right. Because he put blinders on you and you can't hear, see and he puts stoppers in your ear so you can't hear. He has an answer. And I know. That's why I'm here. Telling you what I truly feel and what I believe. Your emotions and your feelings and your emotions. opinions don't mean nothing, though. It's right. It should be thus say at the most time. I believe what the word of God says. But the word of God just told you And I believe what he said that he, what he cleans. And I believe what the Holy Spirit has done. And what you he didn't even, you, you've never read in the Bible that God cleansed for You're a liar. He Where? That's what he showed the vision Where? to Peter. That's what no. he showed the vision. He saw animals that were unclean, and he basically to tell them, I already cleaned everything. Do not call unclean what I have cleaned. When he was he speaking about it? people, and he, not he, animals. But he was speaking as animals. He was cleaning. No. He was speaking that he cleaned everything. You're a liar. No, I'm not a liar. He didn't even, look, in that, in that verse, swine wasn't even picked out right. or mentioned. Right. It just said a bunch uh, 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 different animals. It didn't say pork. So you can't even use that as an argument. Find pork in Acts uh, 10. Pork, swine, pot belly, uh, bacon, ham, sandwich, with two M's. I need to find it. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen. It's fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and, 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 and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Why is God still making a differentiation in the last book of the Bible of what's clean and what's unclean in the foul? If the dietary law is wiped away. That was mean. Meanwhile, he just hit you with a hook you didn't even see coming. I got Acts uh, 10 28. Come on, read it again. Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Read and he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Any man common or unclean. Doesn't speak about beasts. That was an analogy. Just like it says, I see men walking as trees. He's not saying, I see trees walking like in uh, 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 Lord of the Rings. Right. These are men. In the garden, the plants are people. It's an analogy. Nowhere in the Bible says pork is clean and pork is okay to eat. We just got two witnesses that say that's not true. God and Jesus, which should be the end all be all. Come. So Jorge, look, if you're Mexican, you are an Israelite. That's right. You're a bloodline descendant of the Israelites. Right. I can prove that historically without the Bible. Right? If that doesn't matter to you, if that doesn't matter to you, that's fine. That's your own prerogative. My name is Randy. And that's all that matters. You're, 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 can it be blotted out? So, what are the qualifications for your name being written in the book of life? What are the wages of sin? So how is your name written in the book of life if you're sinning willfully? You're in the book of death right now. That's right. You're in the congregation of the dead. 
the fruit is what speaks. At the end of the day, your life is what speaks for you. Truly, what you, you, we could stand and say anything we want, but at the end of the day, what God has truly done in you is what you live, what you actually do. That's what speaks for you. That's Look, what Jesus said by your You fruits, talk a good one. game because most of the stuff you're saying, I agree with until you get to the point where you're disobeying what you're talking about. When your actions contradict what you're saying. Look, as soon as you get your life in order and you stop sinning, then come up here and stand with us. All right. Right. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead. This one real quick. Baruch 4 from the top. This yeah. is the book of the commandments of God. Book of the commandments of God. And the law that endureth forever. This is how we find out if you're going to be written in the book of life or in the book of the dead, that Egyptian bullshit. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. If you keep the commandments, you come to life. But such as leave it shall die. If you're not keeping the commandments, you're not written in the book of life. You can't claim that. Paul, oh, your master didn't even claim that. Jesus is not misunderstanding. You know... Okay. Hey, to his boy, you get baptized right now, he ain't paying attention. He asked me if I've been baptized. Everybody up here get baptized on a regular basis. That's right. right. In the name of Jesus. Regular basis. What is baptism? Okay, so if you're baptized, do you receive the Holy Ghost? It's a gift afterwards. It's a gift afterwards. Have you been baptized? I've been baptized. Why are you still eating pork? That's right. right. Confounded. Confounded. Look, bro, I could keep the commandments. Keep the commandments, keep the faith in who the world calls Jesus Christ. Do better. Okay. We gotta do better, but you do better. God will guide us. God will teach us. At the end of the day, I said, I feel challenged to like debate, 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 debate. But like I said, at the end of the day, we all gotta stand before God judge. And like I said, this the end of all discussion, that's for God. This is a this agreement we're coming with. Do you fear God, God if you disobey Him? We have to Hold on, you. We have to. We should. Yeah, we but should. are you afraid of God if you if He tells you to do something, you do it? Do something else regardless of the consequences. Yeah, like, yeah, if I, you're I, scared I like of me, I like fear if God. you're scared of me, and I told you, give me your wallet, run your shoes, and all get naked. Give me all your shit. If you're scared of me. And you can't fight back. You're going to do what I said do. Right. You don't fear God if you continually yeah. break his... That's what I said. I lack fear of God. And I humble myself before God. I humble the truth. The truth. You lack the fear of God? We lack fear of God. You lack... A lot of I'm scared as hell. Right. <laughs> Trembling. We lack fear of God when we sin again. Exactly. See, my friends, you guys can tell me... Look, you, you guys don't sin. You guys don't feel God. You guys can tell me all this. But, and I'm not even going to tell you all oh, you do this or that. You, you guys know your life. Yeah, I can't tell you. <laughs> Only Jesus knows your life and yourself. Know your life. Like, you won't get convicted. So it's just like this. If you say, if you, if you sin against God, if you go right now and do something you shouldn't, if you think of, you watch pornography, listen to bad music, secular music, you go do, touch women and stuff. Where's like the commandment against secular music? It, talks, it glorifies his sin. It glorifies his sex. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is, is that hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A sin is a, the breaking of one of the laws of God. You have to show me in the laws of God where I can't listen to secular music. Otherwise, you're adding to the law, and you're breaking the law then. I'll, say, right. I'll, I'll just say this. Is listening to secular music feeling of the flesh or feeling of the spirit? It's just thinking. Hold on. You're still talking about emotions, man. That's what the Bible says. Is it? Because no. anything is feeling it a, of the flesh show me the law that I Show me the law for music. But that's what Jesus said. Law for said. music. See? You're adding to the law. The fruit on me for it too. All right, so is fruit of the flesh bad or is it? Is it? Is what it, are the fruit? Matter? Look, the fruits of the spirit come by keeping the commandments of God. The yeah, fruits of the God. flesh come by submitting to your flesh, which is what you do. You grow by God, and you start yeah. growing in religion. Deuteronomy four verse two in the NIV. I'm show you how you're breaking the law, and then I need you to show me how listening to secular music is breaking the law. Do not add to what I command you. And do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. So the Bible says if you add to the law, then you're breaking the law. Yeah, subtract the pig, add the music. <laughs> Add me some music I mean, talking about you, the You pig. have read that, right? What? That feeling of the flesh is death. 
the Bible says, and it's the, the feeling of the flesh is dead. Are you talking about lust? The feeling of the flesh. Anything that you, you to satisfy this flesh that's a sin. Flesh. That's, a, that's the nature of a flesh, right? Luke chapter verse. Wait. So, Luke chapter verse. Sex, sex, hold on. Sex feels good. Have you ever had your 20 year old? Is now, sex correct, against the law? Was it correct that I fornicated? I'm asking, is sex against the law? Sex uh, in a married couple? No. What is marriage in the Bible? Marriage is sex. Lawful Ooh. sex is marriage. I feel like it goes with the motive of lust as well. If you just marry somebody because you just want to bang them and you want to feel, you want Wait, to so your in the in the laws of God, it gives us it gives us an outline that when we go to war kill all the men we can take the women for ourselves we can have sex with them and then, then if we want to we can throw them away the law says we can take women have sex with them and throw them away ain't that what abraham did hey see, but this, abraham was a but, perfect man see, but this he's is throwing bitches away god changed <laughs> and kids god changed <laughs> back then god changed hey, it back then or what do you say if you Look at a woman with lustful, you have adultery in your heart, Jesus said. That's fine, because it already said my adultery. I agree with that. If so, it's a married woman, so, so, what's adultery? You don't even know what adultery is. It's cheating. But no. It's, how is it cheating? So, Solomon has 700 wives and 300 concubines. Which ones did he cheat on? <laughs> but I say like everything changed. No, because you believe, like I said, your God is wishy washy and inconsistent. Right. The God of the Bible, the Bible says He does not change. All I have said was what the Bible says. All Where does said, it say where? the law or God change? Show me that. Well, I'm saying what God has said. All I have said is what Jesus said. If you look at a woman with lust, have you guys seen? Start looking at her what with is, and we start desiring her in our heart, okay. and we commit adultery in our heart. And he's, the Bible says, No adulterer shall inherit the truth. Okay, right. okay, why? Because that's sin. What, so is, that's what, I tell what you. is the basic principles so, of yeah, what adultery is? If we is. don't, sat, if we satisfy, if we sin, we, we like, All right, he's kind of like this, like, so do eating, the law, do look, this, look, do like that. Eating, eating, eating a is eating a, a fleshly a lust, eating is a fleshly lust, right? Yeah, you <laughs> said, Yeah, like you listen. You're eating pork because it tastes good to me. Right. But it's breaking the laws of God directly. And now you're trying to tell me sex with a woman which is pleasurable is against the laws when God told us to be fruitful and multiply. You're letting your lust when you, you do are. That. I'm not. Because you're you're allowing your sin to tell you that pork tastes good and I'm gonna eat it regardless of what God said. This is John chapter 5, verse 14. Afterward, Yahweh shot, or Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. God says, no if more. you walk away here after we told, after the prophets right. of God told you not to eat pork, your death is right around the corner. Look, no. God yeah, says don't pray for reason. Yeah, God says don't pray for a man that is worthy of death though. Uh, if we told love. you to repent and we this is love. Right. Open so rebuke I, is love. So the whole world, me and you, we all deserve death, right? What? The truth, we all deserve it because we all have sinned God. Right. You can't okay. tell me we haven't sinned. Okay. We all deserve death. Okay. So if you standing okay. up here is by the mercy of God. Do you believe that? We're all here yeah. standing but by the because, mercy of God. Right. Because God because, loves us so much. Because I value God's mercy. Right. I'm not going to abuse God's mercy. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You do in word, but not in deed. Right. Right. Friend, I haven't, you haven't seen all of my life. You haven't seen anything. No, I'm going by what you've already told me. Your own mouth condemns you, not me. And that is very true. That's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. It's not really funny. It's true. And it's it's super sad. Serious. It's super sad. serious. God. It's super serious. It's super God. serious. Sad. That we will stand before God and we will be judged for Read everything. That. So that's what I'm telling you, my friend. Yeah. And that's like this. We have to fulfill the commandment, not eat pork, and fulfill. Look, the reason you're life. trying to justify it is because you've already condemned yourself in your God. own conscience. I'm not I can't even convince you because. You're convicting yourself that it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Read. Ecclesiastes 14 and 2. Bring it out. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him, and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. That's what you're doing. 
You're giving up a fight that's not even hard to fight. I'm trying to teach you how to swing and block and you're not listening. I, I got one perfect for him. Uh, so rock 32 and 17. Bring it out. A sinful man, man will not, not be reproved, but, but find it an excuse according to his will. What? That verse just said oh, you're hey, born of the day. Very true. When we had said you're trying to wow. justify and say it's not bad. That's what you're saying. <laughs> that's and that's what you guys told me too. That listening to different kinds of things or doing these kind of things, fornicating, adultering your heart isn't bad. And we I'm not saying it's not. I'm telling you it is. You basically right. justify it. Where is it? No, no. no. I'm telling you I agree with what Jesus said. Amen. If you lust after a married woman with your eyes, if you're thinking about having sex with a woman that is already taken, you are committing adultery. And if you do, that's a because you, you took out the fruit. Exactly. Okay, so, but, I agree with you. so that's if, what I'm saying. Let's fulfill everything. That's why I learned. Because but it, you ain't even got it. the first step on there yet. That part that's what I'm is worth learning. Uh, it's like I tell you, oh, you do this, do this, oh, you're gone because you're not doing that. We're learning. We're growing in Jesus Christ. It's a walk with God. It's yeah. not like, it's a walk with God, right? Like, yeah. like that's, that's all it is, man. I'm going to need you to start crawling ASAP because you on the flow like a baby on the back. Can't even lift your head up. Oh, the Lord will guide me. And the Lord will guide you guys. And I pray that the Lord will reveal all of us how the true way and how everything is. Amen. And uh, I will let go now. But... Like I said, the end of all command is fear God and fulfill everything that's written. That's fine. Right. 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 Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a seat. All right. Have a seat. Hey, hey, you're, you're hey, bro, my man, you, your tall, light-skinned friend never showed uh, 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 Lucifer to be the devil either. I don't want to point that out. Well, like I said, we're all learning, my friends. We're all, yeah. I, I, I don't Look, find myself too. Look, we're the teachers. <laughs> y'all, y'all need to come to class, man. Hey, most high brought you in front of us for a reason. The most high brought us here together. At the, hey, end the, the, at the end of the day, Look, the truth is, uh, the Most High brought you to our church. Right. This is our church. You're in the house of God. The right words now. that are coming out of my mouth, if you guys, if you guys received it, it will come. The whole, if God will convict you guys. The Lord will work with you guys, and that will say what was true, right? Look, you would have a better argument if you read it out in the Bible. I would have to submit to it. Amen, brother. And that's and that's my fault. Because like I've read the Bible, but I haven't memorized it like that. Like, oh, where is it specifically? But I have, I have read, I, I've read things, and that's very true. Because having an argument, you have to really say the word of God. Because at the end of the day, we can't argue against the word of God. We can't say this. But at the end of the day, is it's always humble ourselves to the word of God and to the knowledge of God, and let's not be prideful of what the Lord has. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. Isaiah 8 and 20. Bring it out. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And with that, we're going to say, Call Halal Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. That's all praise to the Most High God, in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Fuck the police and Quam Yashiro. Fuck the police and Quam Yashiro. <laughs> Shine a light on. They done let them bruise in the dough. Oh shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. We ain't going nowhere. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Look. Joe Biden need the free dark load. The hell is wrong with you? If you Hebrew K, what the hell is wrong with you? He said, Deacon, you a Hebrew. I can't do a song with you. If the Christians find out, then they gon' take me off the pews. I'm like, shut the hell up, clown. Stop picking sides. I'm so Hebrew, you can see it in my eyes. Lately, I've been seeing the Hebrews on the rise. And if they say we hate white people, that ain't lies. I know some Hebrews from out west, them boys be blickied up. I know some Hebrews from out east, them camps be lit as fuck. I know a sister from the west and she be scripted up. And if you jump in her DM, she gon' refuse the lust. I like pomegranates, cause it got stars on it. My heart bleed for my people, though it got scars on it. Yeah.